now begin the fourth lecture on the Gospel of Luke. We will begin with Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 is about the temptation of Jesus. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit in the desert. Jesus is God's Son and he does not have any sins. Then why was he tempted? He was tempted for three reasons. First, it was so that he would be trained. Jesus was spiritually God's Son, but he was human like us, and therefore he needed to be trained. Second, it was so that Jesus would take part and help us when we are tempted. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 through 16. Third, it was so that Jesus would defeat the devil and conquer him. Revelation chapter 5 verse 5. Jesus went out to the quiet and secluded desert so that he could understand God's word and overcome temptations through the power of God. The Lord prayed with sincerity before God. Thus, Jesus defeated all temptations through the power of the Holy Spirit and with God's Word. Jesus received these temptations in his heart. Jesus did not literally follow Satan up to a high place. There is no mountain that overlooks all the kingdoms of the world. Therefore, the devil put these temptations into Jesus' heart, and Jesus received them in his heart. Jesus received three temptations. The first temptation is in verses 2 through 4, that the devil came and told Jesus to make stone into bread when Jesus was hungry after fasting for 40 days. Jesus had the power to make stone into bread. However, the Lord overcame this temptation. The second temptation is in verses 5 through 8. The devil showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and said, If you worship me, it will all be yours. However, Jesus did not chase after honor or glory. Jesus conquered it all. The third temptation is in verses 9 through, tw 9 through 12. Throw yourself down from here. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. People like miracles and signs, but Jesus had spiritual freedom. Jesus had three temptations, and he was able to overcome with two things. Tell this stone to become bread. Worship me. Throw yourself down from here. God did not say any of these things. They were not God's commands. God did not tell Jesus to do these things. These are not the things that God wanted. God did not want Jesus to make stone into bread. God did not want Jesus to seek glory and honor. God did not want miraculous works to happen. 
Jesus overcame the three temptations with God's words from Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy was written for the people who were born in the wilderness and to encourage the people who were to enter the land of Canaan. We can defeat temptations with God's word alone. We must think whether something is from God or not. It is important that we overcome temptations with God's word. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and lived by the guidance of the Holy Spirit and he overcame temptations with God's word and prayer. Jesus received three kinds of temptations. First was the temptation of materials and greed. Second was the temptation of desires and greed. Third was the temptation of miracles and selfishness. The three temptations of Jesus were universal temptations. These three kinds of temptations usually come through greed. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, when Eve saw the tree of good and evil, the fruit looked good, it was pleasing to the eye, and desirable for gaining wisdom. Hence, Eve ate the fruit. There are temptations of materials, temptations of desires, and temptations of selfishness and miracles. Temptations usually come in these forms. In 1 John chapter 2 verses 16 through 17, it says everything in the world are sinful, are cravings of sinful man, lust of his eyes, and boasting of what he has and does. These are the things of the world, the things that will pass, the things that will fade, and the things that will grow old. Only the things that act according to God's will will remain forever. Now we will look at the devil's temptations. In verse 1, when Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit, that was when the devil tempted Jesus. When there are good things, there are also bad things. When God's works are accomplished, that is when the devil begins to work. In John chapter 8 verse 44, the devil is a murderer. There is no truth in him. He is a liar. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 10, it says the devil is an accuser. The devil is an accuser a murderer, a liar, and he accuses our brothers. The devil attacked Jesus, the Son of God, and tempted him. The devil attacked and tempted Jesus, who was filled with the Holy Spirit. Read verse 13. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. When the devil finished all his tempting, he left until an opportune time. An opportune time means that the devil would wait until another suitable time. 
The devil always seeks opportunities and makes a lot of effort to work in this world. Later, the devil came through Peter. The devil also came through the Pharisees. The devil came through the Sadducees and the teachers of the law. The devil continued to come. It left for some time. This means that the devil sought opportunities and chances. In verses 14 through 30, Jesus preaches. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 12, it says that Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. This is the road that Jesus walked down. Jesus preached the gospel, taught in the synagogues, and he healed sicknesses. When Jesus carried out his holy ministry, he was welcomed by some people, but he was also rejected by others. In verse 14, it says Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 4, verses 2 through 12, the devil tempted in three ways. Tell this stone to become bread. Throw yourself down from here. Worship me. When Jesus overcame these temptations with God's word, the power of the Holy Spirit was upon him. In verse 15, Jesus returned to Galilee with the power of the Holy Spirit. There were synagogues there. God gave Jesus the opportunity to preach the Bible in these places. The Lord taught the Bible and everyone praised him. In verse 16, Jesus went to Galilee where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and kept the Sabbath as was his custom. This was the Lord's faith in keeping the customs of the law. The rules of worship in the synagogue were to read a part of Deuteronomy in the beginning and then read from the prophetic writings, then read and interpret the Bible according to whom the attendant instructed to do so. Jesus was chosen by the synagogue attendant and was given permission to read the Bible. In verse 17, the attendant told Jesus to read the book of Isaiah. The Holy Spirit moved the attendant to give the scroll to Jesus to read. The book of Isaiah in the Old Testament tells most clearly about the Messiah. Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 2. The Holy Spirit compelled everyone to read from the Bible. They were verses that prophesied about the Messiah and the works that he would accomplish. Jesus came to this earth to do this work. Jesus read the Bible to reveal this to the people. 
In verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus so that Jesus would carry out the work of redemption. The purpose of the Holy Spirit was to come upon Jesus to preach good news to the poor as is written in verse 18. It says, He has anointed me, which is Messiah in Hebrew and Christ in Greek. The two terms mean him who has been anointed. God anointed the Lord of Redemption, and God gave Jesus the duties of king, prophet, and high priest. In verses 19 through 20, there were four purposes for why God sent Jesus. They were the works that Jesus was to do. Jesus was sent to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recover the sight of the blind, release the oppressed, and proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. These four things refer to spiritual state. They were not liberation theology that would liberate the people from the oppression of worldly politics. This was not liberation of the laborers. Jesus' cross and resurrection is the gospel, and the gospel would bring true freedom and liberation to all the peoples and heal all sicknesses. In verse 19, Jesus says to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. This is the ear of Jubilee. This comes around once every 50 years. At that time, the slaves were freed and rented lands were returned to its owners. Therefore, freedom for the prisoners, sight for the blind, and freedom for the oppressed all refer to a spiritual jubilee. This is the ear of spiritual grace. Jesus would give a ear of spiritual grace through the gospel. Jesus is the one who gives a spiritual jubilee. In verses 20 through 21, all people's eyes were fastened on Jesus in how he taught the Bible through his spiritual power. In verse 21, Jesus said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Here, Jesus read from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 2. Jesus was the one who came as Isaiah prophesied. The Lord came and personally read from the scriptures and the people heard in person. God's word was fulfilled and accomplished. In verse 22, God's word came true. The people's reactions are told in verse 22. They all spoke well of Jesus. However, they spoke well of Jesus but not because they had true faith in Jesus. They were amazed at the gracious words of Jesus. These were words of unbelief. 
This is because they only knew Jesus as Joseph's son. They did not know that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. They only knew Jesus as the son of a carpenter, Joseph's son. They saw Jesus' physical side and familiar side first. They did not see Jesus' spiritual side or how God was using Jesus. It is the same today. In verse 23, it says there was a saying, Physician, heal yourself. Jesus spoke to the people of Nazareth using the saying, just as a physician heals himself before healing others, go to your hometown and carry out Christ's ministry before using Christ's power elsewhere. This is what the people of Nazareth thought about Jesus. What is Jesus' conclusion regarding this in verse 24? Jesus said, No prophet is accepted in his hometown. Prophets are not accepted in their hometowns because the people of the hometown know the prophets' families and weaknesses. The people of the hometown have seen the prophets' humanly sides and therefore they are not welcomed in their hometowns. The people of Nazareth rejected Jesus because they did not believe in the truth and God's works that were revealed through the prophets. In verses 25 through 27, Jesus pointed out their faults with two examples. First, Jesus told them about the widow in Zarephath in Elijah's time. In the time of the prophet Elijah, when there was a famine for three and a half years, there were many widows in Israel, but none of them welcomed Elijah. One widow in Zarephath who was from a foreign region, welcomed Elijah. In this way, those who welcome prophets are valuable people. Second, there were many lepers in Israel during Elijah's time, but no one in Israel was cleansed. Only Naaman the Syrian was healed. Naaman was healed of his illness through humility and obedience. Like the widows of Zarephath and Naaman, we must be healed through humility and obedience, and we must truly serve God's servants. In verse 28, the people in the synagogue heard this and were furious. They were wicked people. In verses 29 through 30, they chased Jesus out of the town and took Jesus to a cliff of a hill to throw him off the cliff. However, Jesus walked right through the crowd and went on his way. In verses 31 through 44, Jesus preached in Capernaum. What did Jesus preach in Capernaum? Jesus taught the people and healed their illnesses. 
Verse thirty one. Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to teach the people. Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and preached the Bible on the Sabbath. Galilee was the center of Jesus' public ministry. The center of Jesus' ministry in Galilee was Capernaum. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth, and preached in Capernaum. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 13, Capernaum was by the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, and it was located near a lake. There were a lot of people in Capernaum. The fishing industry flourished, and it was the center of transportation, and thus Jesus taught there. Jesus taught the Bible in the synagogue in Capernaum, which was like the sanctuaries we have today. In verse 32, it says, There was authority in Jesus' teaching. There was grace in Jesus. There was inspiration. There were works. Jesus taught the Bible with confidence, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus preached God's word, interpreted God's word, and practiced what was written in the Bible. Then the power of God's word was on him. In verses 33 through 37, Jesus healed sicknesses. In verse 33, it says that there were many people in the synagogue in Capernaum who were demon-possessed. The devil makes people fall, throws them down, kills and makes filthy. When people walk in unbelief, disobey, and walk in world-centered ways, they are bound to be demon-possessed. The demon was overwhelmed by Jesus' authority and made the man cry out. In verses 34 through 35, the demons have nothing to do with Jesus of Nazareth. The demons have nothing to do with Jesus' work. The devil will ultimately be destroyed. Faith is not about knowing. Faith is about believing. No matter how well-spoken demons are, they damage Jesus' movement of salvation. Therefore, Jesus commanded them to be quiet. The demon immediately left the man with one command from Jesus, and the man became healthy. Everything obeys even when Jesus speaks only one word. In verses 36 through 37, the demon was terrified at the authority of Jesus and obeyed. People did not know Jesus or his power, and they were amazed at Jesus' authority and power when they saw the demon obey. Thus, news about Jesus spread throughout the surrounding area. In verses 38 through 39, Jesus healed Simon's mother-in-law.
Read verses 38 through 39. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law of her high fever. Here it says that Jesus rebuked the fever and it left her. In the Gospel of Mark, it says Jesus took her hand and held her up and the fever left her. In Matthew, Jesus touched her hand and the fever left her. Jesus rebuked and healed illnesses healed illnesses through God's word, and healed illnesses by holding people's hands. Jesus healed through many ways. That is why we must not insist on only one way. We cannot say that other ways are wrong. Here, Peter's mother-in-law, who was healed, immediately began to wait on Jesus. Jesus does not heal people so that they could brag about it. Jesus heals so that people could serve. In verses 40 through 41, Jesus healed various kinds of sicknesses. Read verses 40 through 41. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Christ. People gathered wherever Jesus went and they brought sick people to be healed even at night. Jesus placed his hands on each person and healed them. Jesus did not forsake even one dirty patient, but had compassion on them and healed them. Jesus thought about each person's condition and circumstance. Jesus cared for each person. Jesus chased out demons of those who were demon-possessed. Even when the demons shouted that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus rebuked them and did not allow them to speak. Jesus forbid the demons to speak even when they spoke correct words. Jesus forbid them because first, Jesus could have been treated as the same kind as demons. This was not the time to publicly announce that Jesus was Christ. In verses 42 through 44, Jesus preached in many synagogues in Galilee. Verses 42 through 44, at daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, 
because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. In, verses, in verse 42, Jesus went to a solitary place to pray. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. Luke chapter 21, verse 37. Jesus taught the Bible during the day, and he prayed in the Mount of Olives at night. Hence, God's power continuously rested on Jesus. It was Jesus' habit to pray. This was the road that Jesus walked down. We must take after Jesus. Jesus also did not remain a long time in towns that wanted him to stay. This was because it was God's will for Jesus to preach in many different towns. We too must have the calling to preach the gospel in many different places. It is our calling to preach the gospel in the places the Lord sends us to. It is our calling to preach the Lord's gospel, pre teach the Bible, and heal sicknesses. With this, we will conclude the fourth lecture on the Gospel of Luke. Thank you.